Hey friends, today we're gonna to take you through the process of making parabolic string art. Parabolic string art is something I've been doing with students for probably the last four years. I started with fourth grade, and this year I decided that I was gonna take my third grade through the process because I feel like I could push them a little bit more. Let me show you the process, the materials, and everything you'll need to do this with your students. A template, in just a moment I'll show you how to get the template. You'll also need a push pin. You'll need a blunt tip sewing needle. I prefer the metal versus the plastic. A piece of construction paper. Scissors, glue, and tape. And then your choice of string. So the template I use is from Mum in the Madhouse. If you Google Mum in the Madhouse and type in parabolic, it should be the very first Google search at the top. I will also put the link to this below. Um, you can scroll through here and just find a bunch of different templates. My students used, uh, had the choice of any of them and almost every one of the templates was used by a different student. And they are free, just so you know. If you want to go the route of making this a STEAM lesson and use math to integrate into this art project, Khan Academy has an awesome resource. If you Google Khan Academy and Parabolic Arcs, you should be able to easily find this lesson. What they do here is they use the Disney Pixar animators to explain how maths are used and parabolic arcs are used for computer graphics to make all the animation in their movies. The videos are super awesome. They're really detailed. The students are interested, but it will take some time. So plan on devoting an entire class period just to um, learning how the maths are used in introduction to parabolic arcs. Let's get started. Once students have chosen their template, they're going to glue the back side of their template to the dark colored construction paper that they have chosen. Next, my students are using push pins or thumbtacks and sponges to poke every single hole that is there on their template. Next, students measure out an arm span of their choice of color string. They cut the string and then we go on to the process of threading and tying the needles. The students in this video have already uh, completed this project and have mastered the skill and they have all volunteered some of their time this morning to help me create this video. Once needles are tied, students will then tape the loose end of their string onto their paper. That way, once they begin sewing and they pull the string through, it doesn't accidentally um, come all the way through the paper. So we're securing the end, and the students have already been taught how to do the sewing technique. They know that on the white side of the paper, they're going to be stitching, and on the black side of the paper, they're going to be going across to the opposite axis. To help students remember the pattern, we tell them, I tell them on the white side, they go next door into the closest dot, and then on the nighttime or on the black side they go across the street going across the street is what makes the straight lines that will eventually make up our intersecting um, parabola and on the white side you're just going to be seeing if you do it correctly you'll just be seeing the stitches once one complete parabola is finished the students will tape the string keeping it tight, but not too tight because we don't want to um, make the paper fold. They'll cut off the excess string, remove that string from the needle, 
and they'll then uh, go ahead and either continue with the same color, re-thread the needle and tie it, or choose a new color if they would like to make the next part of the four-pointed star a new color. The students in this video are requiring about two 30-minute periods to finish this. And again, these are students that have already been experienced this project. So plan on um, your higher um, grade levels to be able to do this anywhere from probably an hour to an hour and a half. And if you are attempting this with third graders, plan on the entire process to take anywhere from three to six class periods. Once students have completed their entire design, they'll need to make sure that for the final step, they tape down any loose strings that are on the back. They'll clip off the remaining string that's still attached to their needle. If you choose to crop the picture so that it can also have a different colored background, as you saw from some of my pictures, um, just make sure you use a flat edge. So what I'm gonna do now is give you some tips, tricks, pointers, uh, troubleshoot, some problems that you might run into with your students. So first of all, the needles, right? We are using blunt tip needles. They um, will not penetrate your skin um, through just accidental use. Um, keyword on accidental. Obviously anything you use inappropriately could become a weapon, but in the four years I've done this we've never had any students um, deliberately or accidentally hurt themselves. So blunt tip needles are pretty easy to find. Just be careful. They can sometimes, um, if you purchase them, uh, let's say cheaply, they can take a very long time to arrive if they're from out of country. Um, but I got these, and the problem that I run into with them is they are a light color when they fall on the floor, which is basically the same color, we lose them. So one way, one hack that we came up with this year is just a simple magnet tray. Um, you can buy these pretty cheap on Amazon for just a few bucks. When students are not using them, they throw them on the magnet tray, and then you're not gonna lose the needles nearly as much, okay? So another trick that we uh, found is when poking holes, Instead of using the needles to poke holes, we actually end up using thumbtacks. Um, thumbtacks are better because you have more control, they're smaller, and from the dollar store, you get a whole pack of sponges. I put the sponge behind the paper, and that's how we actually poke through into the sponge so that it doesn't hit our fingers and not hitting the hard surface. All right, one problem we ran into though, as, as we are sanitizing everything that students use with either um, a spray sanitizer or soaking, um, these end up rusting. So you might go through thumbtacks a, a lot quicker than you anticipated because you don't wanna be using rusty materials with students. Uh, that would be a disaster waiting to happen if we have to go get tetanus shots. So it's, if you are sanitizing materials, you will notice that these do rust fairly quickly. I would just dispose of them and get some new thumbtacks. All right, so what happens in the events that paper tears? Because we are using two thin plies of paper and not using cardboard, you will find breakage in your paper fairly often as students are still learning how to do this process. So let's just say that a student makes a mistake right here in stitches instead of going across. And there's two things that might happen. The student might actually yank it and tear it like that, or they might go back through where they were just at, and as they're pushing it through, they'll make their hole so large that they actually end up ripping the paper there. Okay, so you see that rip? Great, what do we do? We've done so much work, I don't wanna throw this away. It's actually a very easy, and it actually will reinforce it and make the paper stronger. What I'm gonna do now is take a piece of tape, find where the rip is, okay, it's right here. I'm going to cover the rip with the tape, and now I'm going to repoke. Now, I like to repoke using the needles, but most students will use a thumbtack. I'm just gonna repoke those holes. 
the tape has now reinforced that paper even stronger. Some people might prefer to put a long band of tape on all the holes and then repoke them. And now that even though there's a slight tear there, once that's covered with string, you won't even notice it. And it is now reinforced with the tape on the back. Okay, and then lastly, when students are finished, they might see that some of their paper is peeling in the back. You can just reinforce that now with a very little bit of liquid glue. Be careful though, too much liquid glue will cause your paper to um, wrinkle and the final process may not look as clean. And there you have it. Shoot me any questions if you have any on Facebook or um, if you can in the comments below.